Hello everyone and welcome again to another Teacher Joseph podcast. Did you know that when you speak in English, you have to be aware of how you speak as well as what you say? British people, we often give real meanings of how we feel, not with words, but how we say those words by using intonation, breathing, spaces. Let me explain. So imagine, hey Joseph, how are you? I'm fine. Hey Joseph, how are you? <sighs> yeah, fine. Hey Joseph, how are you? <sighs> yeah, I'm fine, I suppose. Now, in each of these examples, an entirely different mood is being created by the answer. The first one was very positive. The second one was, well, a little bit positive, a little bit negative. And the last one was just negative. Now, that proves to us that how we say the word is more important than the word itself. Because that word there, more or less, created three different meanings. Fine. Yeah, I'm great. <sighs> Fine. Maybe I'm not so great. And the last one, yeah, fine, I suppose. Showing that I'm really not great. So the word there took on different meanings, but only because of the intonation. Now that means everything you say in a second language needs to have the appropriate viewpoint or emotion with it. I mean, after all, you don't want people to think that you're incongruent. Incongruent means when your words don't match your beliefs. Incongruent simply means when two things don't match. Now, in my experience as a teacher and in other places that I've worked and community groups that I've been involved with, one thing is very clear. People who speak without any kind of intonation or any kind of emotion in their voices, they are viewed very suspiciously in English culture. The reason for that is because people can't easily interpret what they mean. They can't easily see the feelings behind the words. Whereas with British people, our feelings behind the words are really, really important. It's like a musical language. If you think of a song, it has the words and it has the musical melody. Now, which one of those two is most important? If you take away the music and you're left only with the lyrics of the song, then you can easily find that the words don't really make much sense or they, they, they don't really have so much meaning. Put them with the music, however, and you get a wonderful song. If you take away the words from a melody and leave the melody, you have something that sounds very nice, but doesn't have any interpretation or meaning, but it's still good. So if you try to say a sentence without any kind of background emotion or background messaging, then of course, you're going to have some problems in, uh, in uh, communicating. One of the ways that I've seen this in English culture is that many people who perhaps have temporary office jobs, they, you know, they, they work as filing clerks maybe, or in the mailroom, they don't last very long because their colleagues are thinking, I don't really know this person. I've been working with them for a while and all I hear 
really are kind of blank words or something expressionless. And then that goes to the boss. And the next thing you know, the person's taken away and they're told, we don't think you're a good team player. Why? Because you don't really get along well with other team members. Why? Because you're not communicating well. You don't sound happy. Are you happy? And you see how this simple thing of not using melody or intonation in your communication can get you into trouble. Now, I'm not saying that you have to sound like a song all the time. Remember, there's sad songs as well as happy songs. The songs that make you angry as well as songs that make you sad. So all you have to do is to really be more in touch with how you want to say something. As I always say, the best way to practice this safely is just listen to other people talking. Begin to watch more UK dramas, which, well, they can be a little bit negative, but just realize the power that you have with your intonation. And remember, you really, really must use it. Because if you don't, you will get into trouble somewhere down the line. I mean, even AI voices have intonation built into them because they know how important it is to speak with emotion. It's a little bit different in American English because they use more very direct words to get their message across. And that's not quite the same in British English because we are much more polite, which makes it even harder to really understand what people are saying. And amongst ourselves, for example, in scenarios like dating, oh, it is very, very difficult to try to work out whether someone's interested in you, especially when everything is lovely. Oh, very nice. Oh, how interesting. You really have to get beyond that. And it's not easy. It's not easy, especially when you live in an environment where these kinds of messages are put up to protect each other. So intonation serves a number of purposes. To give you a hidden message, because, uh, of course, people don't want to speak directly with words, as a way of being polite, but without actually meaning anything. Oh, how lovely. Oh, how interesting. Oh, really? And you can hear there that that sounds a little bit insincere. And you have to do a bit of digging to know if the person really is interested or not. But let's come back to a few scenarios of how you can change your intonation. Well, in order to practice, shadowing is definitely number one. Okay, so you listen to a native speaker in a drama and you copy them. It sounds a bit shallow, but it is actually one of the only ways that you're able to practice things like intonation. Listen to my podcasts. Notice where I'm intonating with my voice up and down. Now, let's look at a few workplace scenarios just to see how we can change our intonation. Well, one way you can easily do this is by using more phrases than you need to use and intonating them. So, for example, the boss comes to your desk and he says, Hi, can you do this for me? You could just say, yeah, leave it there. Thanks. But if you want to be seen as being a little bit more friendly and happier and indeed fluent, you could just take that extra minute to say, hi, how are you today? What's up? And a big smile. Because when you smile, people don't have a choice except to smile back at you. 
Now, you might think, oh, why would I want to smile at someone, especially the boss if he's bringing me work? It is just cultural. We always have to create a sense of welcome. So a question, hi, how are you? As the boss is trying to give you something, is a great way to show him or her that you're just pleased to see them and also that you're pleased to be there. If you compare that to, can you do this for me, please? Yeah, sit it down, I'll do it next. You can hear there that there isn't a lot of emotion. There's nothing there to read. And I don't think the boss could ever say that you're being friendly if you answer him just with a very short sentence. And that's the same if you're doing an IELTS exam with the British Council. These very short answers really will get you nowhere because you're not demonstrating anything. You want to demonstrate a sense of joy at work as well. Even if no one else is doing it, the British workplace sometimes can be uh, a bit difficult because they often carry cultures of uh, maybe low morale, for example, or people who are historically unhappy. So it takes a lot of work, but um, you don't want to be dragged down to this level of where people are um, unhappy, you know. It's the same with uh, telephony. You pick up the phone, whether it's an internal customer or an external customer, uh, you can say, hi, Joseph speaking. Or you can simply add in an extra phrase that will help people to understand you're being helpful, especially if you, if you use intonation with it. Hi, Joseph speaking. How can I help? You're showing more of an open attitude about how you can help others. Intonation is incredibly powerful and you really need to be using this music language along with the words. How you do it exactly, of course, depends on the exact circumstance. If you have musical training, it might help because if you consider something like the musical key of C, where your voice can go up and down, you can easily relate that to music. But if it's a sad story, or if you have sad news, like most sad songs, you would have to go into the key of B flat, for example. Um, oh, I just heard the sad news that somebody, our team colleague, has passed away. So you can hear there, there's a completely different tone. And it's this kind of stuff that you want to get in touch with because you don't want to sound like a 1970s robot. Even AI now has intonation. The boss said, you could do this for me. And when people speak like that with me, even in English lessons, I'm waiting for them to finish the sentence. You know, uh, my English isn't good. Uh-huh, yeah, and what? what? What's the next bit of the sentence? Whereas if he said, yeah, my English isn't good, I would know that that's my cue to enter, for example. Okay, so lots of things to think about there. I was talking to someone the other day, and they were speaking quite flat. I asked them a question about uh, their country, and they responded with, yeah, my country is very good and very nice. Uh-huh. And well, you want to tell me something else or are you finished speaking? You know, whereas if they said my country is very good and very nice, I would know the sentence was finished. So even in these little ways, speech pattern intonation is really important. So get shadowing, get listening and even if you understand nothing relating to words today, notice the intonation because it's just as important. Well, I hope this has uh, helped you in some way. It's pouring outside, so I need to go out now. So see you all soon. Take care. Bye.